I would like to start by welcoming Secretary Blinken and his delegation to Chigedi. Uh, this visit is an opportunity to enhance bilateral cooperation between the US and Rwanda and discuss matters of mutual interest. Earlier today, His Excellency the President of Rwanda received Secretary Blinken and his delegation. We had productive discussions about the partnership between our two countries. At the bilateral level, we appreciated our substantial cooperation in various sectors, including defense and security, trade and investment, peacekeeping and health. The government of Rwanda appreciates the significant support of the U.S. government in the fight against COVID-19 in Rwanda, where the U.S. government contributed more than 5 million doses of vaccines and 100 medical ventilators to Rwanda. The U.S. continues to be indeed a strong partner in Rwanda's efforts to build a strong and resilient health system. Our military cooperation has continued to grow and we are happy to co-host with the U.S. the 11th Annual African Air Chiefs Symposium earlier this year in Chigadi. We also discussed insecurity in Eastern DRC, the very real consequences for Rwanda, and we affirmed our support to regional efforts, including the Nairobi and Rwanda initiatives toward peace and stability in our region. We agreed on the need to eradicate all irregular armed groups operating in Eastern DRC, including the FDLR and its factions. We noted the resurgence of hate speech, public incitement, and genocidal ideology in DRC, and the need to address this issue. We also reaffirmed the importance of respect of territorial integrity by all the countries in the region. At the global level, this visit was an occasion to discuss the consequences of the war in Ukraine, on Africa, and Rwanda in particular. We look forward to working with the US government on addressing the challenges we are facing in relation to the consequences of this conflict. Once again, we are happy to host you, Secretary Blinken, and your delegation in Rwanda and we look forward to continuing our work together and strengthening our partnership with the U.S. Thank you. Mr. Minister, thank you very much, and thank you uh, for hosting our delegation today. Uh, a few days ago in South Africa, I set out our administration's new strategy for sub-Saharan Africa, a strategy that recognizes African nations and peoples as equal and vital partners in advancing our shared priorities tackling together global challenges, and being able to deliver for our citizens. Uh, you see those same goals reflected in the relationship between Rwanda and the United States. The journey that Rwanda has taken over the past two decades has been remarkable. You've risen from the ashes of genocide to become a global destination for innovation, for investment, for tourism. You lead internationally on priorities that we share making critical contributions to the United Nations and regional peacekeeping missions, speaking up for Ukraine's right to sovereignty and territorial integrity in the face of Russia's unprovoked and brutal invasion, co-sponsoring a resolution at the United Nations to start negotiations on a legally binding global agreement on plastic pollution, which scores of countries support, including the United States. And our two countries have worked closely together on issues that matter a great deal to Rwanda's future improving the quality of your health care system, strengthening your agricultural production and food security, expanding economic opportunities, bolstering the education system so that Rwandan youth are empowered to seize opportunities in the 21st century economy. In partnership with COVAX, as the minister mentioned, the United States has donated more than five and a half million doses of safe and effective vaccines to Rwanda, which has helped the country vaccinate nearly 70 percent, fully vaccinate nearly 70 percent of its population. Uh, in the last six years, uh, we've helped more than 2.8 million Rwandans get access to electricity for the first time, electricity generated using renewable energy. So the relationship between our peoples is deep and diverse, as is evident in the collaboration between Rwandan and American non-governmental organizations, students, entrepreneurs, doctors, 
and others. As the Foreign Minister said, uh, we just came from a meeting with President Kagame where we covered a wide range of issues, including many of the ones that I've just discussed. I also raised issues where we have real concerns. On those, our discussions were direct, candid, respectful. The President candidly conveyed his views as well. Uh, I discussed the credible reports indicating that Rwanda continues to support the M23 rebel group and has its own forces inside the DRC. Uh, we recognize that Rwanda has security concerns of its own, including reports of cooperation between the Congolese military and the Democratic Forces for the Liberation of Rwanda, uh, the DFLR, uh, an armed group. My message to both President Chisekedi and President Kagame this week has been the same. Uh, any support or cooperation with any armed group in Eastern DRC endangers local communities and regional stability. And every country in the region must respect the territorial integrity of the others. The United States has the same message for all neighboring countries. We've seen where the failure to respect these principles can lead in the immeasurable consequences of decades-long conflict in Eastern DRC, which has taken the lives of more than 5 million people and displaced millions more. Coming out of the discussions, both presidents have agreed to engage in direct talks with each other. They're both ready to resume the talks in the context of the Nairobi process with armed groups, and both welcome the continued U.S. engagement in support of African-led mediation efforts. We know that Rwandans are also alarmed, justifiably, by the increase in hate speech in the DRC targeting Rwanda phones. The United States will continue to condemn such unacceptable and dangerous rhetoric, and I, I encourage President Shisekedi, uh, his government, to do the same. Uh, leaders in the region, particularly Kenya and Angola, are working hard to lower tensions and address the problem of armed groups in the Eastern Congo. We're deeply grateful for those efforts. These initiatives are crucial uh, for getting the actors to resolve their differences peacefully through diplomacy rather than through violence and to address the underlying drivers of the conflict. Uh, in our discussions, I also raised serious concerns about human rights. Uh, as I told President Kagame, we believe people in every country should be able to express their views without fear of intimidation, imprisonment, violence, or any other forms of repression. Uh, that's true whether they're political opponents, human rights defenders, journalists like the ones in this audience, or simply citizens. Uh, these are values cherished by the American people uh, and people around the world. That's why I raised them, as have members of the U.S. Congress. Uh, I raised the, uh, the case of Paul uh, Rusesa Pagina, uh, who is a lawful permanent resident of the United States, and underscored our concerns about the lack of fair trial guarantees provided to him. Uh, later today, I'll have an opportunity to visit the Kigali Genocide Memorial. It will provide a chance to reflect on the unimaginable horrors of the genocide, which reverberate to this day, to reaffirm the importance of standing up rather than standing by in the face of atrocities, and to ask ourselves what history teaches us about the need to prevent hatred and fear from taking hold again and squandering the progress the people of Rwanda have made since that time. We have the deepest admiration for the people of Rwanda, their courage, their resilience, all that they have built, and we hope conversations we've had today will help our partnership grow even stronger. Um, finally, Mr. Minister, if you will uh, indulge me just a point of personal privilege, as we say back in the United States, um, one of the most important tools in our arsenal is the power of the spoken word. Um, what we say, both at home and on the world stage. For the past 18 months, uh, our voice, my voice, has been shaped and sharpened by our chief speechwriter, Megan Rooney. I raise this now because Megan will soon uh, be leaving the department. Uh, others' gain is our profound loss, uh, and that loss is especially pronounced when it comes to Megan. Uh, not only is she a master wordsmith who can make what can sometimes be a dry policy sore, she's a wonderful person. Kind, funny, fun to be around. Uh, to put it in the vernacular, uh, she brings a trademark joie de vivre, which has been uh, a light for me and our entire team, especially the case when we're traveling around the world. So, Megan, thank you, thank you, thank you. And I'll end by saying that going forward, should I happen to say something, um, I don't know, less than artful? <laughs> we'll know why. Thank you.